Dan, um, coming to you with one heck of a story today, but uh, really relevant to some things we're going through. And also we'll bring everybody up to speed on um, some things that have happened since, since the uh, origins of Ape. So uh, not even kidding here about what it says at the bottom. Uh, this is a story about the mob, Millennium Funds, uh, Madoff, Kramer, Ape, AMC, Adam shows up. There's a lot going on. So please excuse my voice a little bit today. I'm dealing with a bit of a head cold, uh, but this is just so interesting to me and so relevant right now. I wanted to just go ahead and share it. All right, let's just dive in. So first off, what you're going to find here um, is an article that was filed with the SEC. Um, it's I'd almost even call it a mini book. It's a lot longer than just your standard article. It's like 100 plus pages PDF. Um, I'm, you can kind of see towards the bottom here, I'm going to link everything. Uh, I always try to share links so that you don't have to trust me. You can go find this for yourself and take a look. Um, and in particular, that article, I'm only going to give you a couple screenshots, like I said, out of, you know, more than 100 pages. So a lot of information in that. Uh, there's a lot of dots out there. Uh, what I'm just making sure to highlight here is I, I don't know what's connected, you know, per se and what's not. I'm not going to go tinfoil theory here. Uh, I do like to do that on my free time, but if I'm going a little more public here uh, with this, what I'm going to just do as a as a be benefit to you and to me is I'll just share what I see as the facts, and I will just show those dots, and we can you know decide for ourselves what's connected and what's not. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit through Millennium, who they are, um, how what's their relationship to Ape, because it is extremely relevant, as I mentioned. Uh, we'll touch on something Adam shared. And then I do have a final thought. So without further ado, um, the article, so this is a screenshot from that article that is on the SEC website. It's basically when you um, file a, a formal comment with the SEC on certain cases and rulings and things, it stays in their register. So you can go find this. And again, I, I'm going to share the link. But interestingly, this article um, starts with short and distort. So you can see what happened uh, in, in this story is... In 2005, Kramer goes on the air and says, hey, this uh, basically biotech company, um, you know, an up-and-coming up medical company has this experiment, experimental cancer drug which uh, has failed with the FDA. Uh, it's not going to be approved. And then the stock tanked over the coming days. And um, actually what happened, too, is a whole bunch of hedge funds, uh, surprise, surprise, coincidence, whatever you want to call it, had shorted it, and many of them had puts on it uh, before Kramer went on the air and said that. So that's why I'm calling it short and distort. Uh, it's a little too coincidental that they just happened to have shorted an up and company, up and coming company before this negative news. Also interesting, you can see I've highlighted. Um, he went on the air and said that they had been denied. They had not even applied for FDA approval yet. So that's really interesting too. So once again, this is what distorters do. Um, so. How does that connect to Ape? We're going to get there eventually. But before we get there, not only have we talked about Kramer and Short and Distort and, uh, you know, biotech and possible cancer treatments, now Madoff shows up. This is all in the same article. And not only Madoff, but the Mafia and Apollo. Why Apollo? Why am I bringing that up? Um, some of you may have seen there's some relationship to some of what's going on with Ape and AMC as well. And uh, there's some apes who've kind of talked about Apollo and and they're really, really big with, you know, connections at the highest levels, let's just say. But so interesting, you can see at the top here I've highlighted Madoff shows up, some people connected to Madoff, uh, the Mafia, and this is all kind of related to the same story. And I just want to kind of highlight the circles that some people are running in because we get to Millennium. Same article. Um, and note that Millennium was founded by a guy who just got out of jail, ran in Madoff circles, uh, and... Um, basically died shortly after he founded uh, Millennium as like a hedge fund. And you can see this name at the top here, Izzy Englander. Remember that name? We're going to talk about him. Uh, he continues the fund. And so then there's some people around that fund who have ties to organized crime themselves. And now we kind of fast forward to um, some of the, uh, the follow-on to that biotech story. And you can see here there were 10 hedge funds that uh, had these sort of long shot bets against them you know, basically like way out of the money puts and, and some shorts. And uh, seven of those um, were basically part of the same network and kind of connected to Bernie, Madoff, and all of that. So interesting there. So far we get the mob, we get Kramer, we get Short and Distort, we get Apollo, we get Madoff, 
and now we got Millennium, and they're all kind of circling around the same same places and faces. So along the way, then you can see here. I think this one was a uh, two yeah two thousand five. Uh, there was a court case against Millennium, so engaging in basically market fraud, um, and that's not going to be the only case we're going to talk about. But so, you know, we've already established they're kind of engaged in short and distort. Now there's other cases against them for sort of timing fraud and manipulating mutual funds and things. Uh, you can see kind of from 99 to 2003. Although, you know, here we are in 2023 and they're still in business. So that kind of is a whole other issue a lot of us have talked about that basically penalties and fines are nothing more than a tax on crime these guys don't go to jail they just pay their little slap on the wrist and then they keep the rest of their profits so i've got a problem with that so why am i talking about millennium though um they show up august 24th some of you might even remember this uh and filed a pretty big 13g so like a purchase of ape um and there's actually four Four of these that all were in this one document. So I'm showing you a screenshot from the document. Again, I'll link this at the end so you can go see this as well. Um, so there's four entities that show up. So let's go through those. Uh, well, first of all, before I do, really interesting that that's August 24th, as you can see. Well, what else was August 24th? That was the day we had the really big landing number, the FTDs uh, for APE. So I am not saying I know that that's connected. I want to be clear on that. I'm just saying here's another dot, you know, whether it should be connected or not. Um, the same day we get their purchase, that this is not the date of the filing. Um, this is the date you can see at the bottom, the date of the event which triggered the filing. So their purchase was August 24th. That's the same day we had our biggest ever FTDs uh, for APE. So that's kind of wild to me. Um, don't know whether we should connect that or not, but certainly interesting. So let's look at what they did. So I mentioned there's a few legal entities all in that one filing but they're, just consider them all connected to Izzy Englander and Millennium. So you see this one's ICS Opportunities. Interesting, I did not highlight, but let me point out, in the Cayman Islands. So that's also kind of interesting for a lot of reasons. And then you can see there's this shared voting power. So this 23.6 million shares. That's a heck of a lot of ape. And then you'll notice, and I'm going to talk a little bit about why I've highlighted this later, uh, note this 4.6% ownership for this ICS Opportunities. 4.6%. Of ape at that time that they had bought and then there's actually a lot more ape so you see Millennium Management shows up same filing uh, 24 and a half million ape about 4.7 percent there's even more so Millennium Group Management slightly different name different uh, legal entity and by the way a lot of companies do this they have multiple legal entities but um, you know it all kind of rolls up to the same control and so that's why you kind of keep seeing this shared voting power so another 24.5 million, another 4.7% now under that legal entity. And another. So here's Izzy himself, 24.5 million ape, 4.7%. So what's going on? Well, first let's just kind of just roll that up, summarize that. So Millennium, those three entities, plus Izzy himself, file a total of about 97 million, a little over that, ape. At that time, so we know there's been some ape issued since then, so I'm just I'm highlighting what happened as of that day. Um, at that time, August 24th, he, through these uh, different groups, had bought 9.4% of the total AMC and ape float, if you kind of just add that up and then divide by both floats combined. So let's say 9.4% of the company's voting power. Um, and note, every entity was just under 5%, and the total combined was, was just under 10%. Um, Maybe if any of you are newer here, I just mentioned that was 9.4% of the total vote at that time. Uh, if you didn't know, APE and AMC shares have an equal vote. Every single share of APE has a vote. Every single share of AMC has a vote. So if you own shares, you have a vote as well times that many shares. It's that many votes that you have. So um, basically, why did I highlight this 5%? So there's certain rules around, um, let's call it kind of visibility, regulations, filing, uh, and sort of rules around when you get to a 5% ownership. And there's other, a no whole other set of rules that kick in if you get to a 10% ownership. So now I will speculate for a minute. Um, I'm not stating fact here. I'm stating, I don't know, opinion or speculation. It's my belief that, you know, companies do this and that he did this to sort of fly under the radar of some of those regulations and rules and visibility in particular. Um, you know, thinking maybe some of us wouldn't see this. So each of those four entities, you noticed, 
all almost hit 5%, but did not hit it. And then the four collectively, um, and sorry, that was kind of the 5% of APE, but then the four collectively did not quite hit 10% of the vote either uh, across APE and AMC. So just interesting to note, you know, we've got him already with ties to short and distort. We've got him with ties to the mafia. We've got him with um, cases of market fraud. And here he is, um, you know, engaging in sort of, uh, let's say, playing in the shadows. So let's detour for a minute. Um, and kind of you see here, I, I'm just saying, or is this really a detour? So there was a tweet January 5th from Adam. Uh, you may have seen that. You can go find that. Uh, and you notice that number he mentioned. And I saw a lot of, you know, uh, the sort of people who like to decode his tweets. I've seen various um, theories on that. But then I did see an ape who kind of said, hey, wait a second, uh, there's something else to this. And so let's talk about that. So there was another case that Millennium had with the SEC. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what that case is. Actually, let's just do that first. So effectively, and, and again, I'll link this. You can go find this. And you'll see that it has to do with them purchasing uh, or actually selling stock pre-IPO and essentially um, basically playing some shell games and committing some fraud there as well. And if you kind of think about Ape was effectively kind of an IPO. Not, not really. We all got that as a dividend, but it was a new stock that was entering the market. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering if there's some kind of connection. And now just think about Adam's tweet, that number. Look at that case number. That is the case number uh, for what Millennium had gotten in trouble for way back in 2002. Um, so that's just kind of why I'm maybe drawing that con uh, connection. Uh, so again, here I suppose that speculation, I should be clear about that, uh, but that connection to APE being something like an IPO and you know, two days into APE, Millennium buying a ton of shares. Seems kind of interesting, no? Um, What's more, I want to tie back to that article too. If you go read that really long article that I started this with, uh, there's some things in there about Millennium basically uh, with IPOs as well. Uh, purchasing a lot of shares, going short on a company, and then dumping the shares to basically dump the stock price. Sounds a little bit like something we may have experienced in Ape, right? So I find that interesting too. Uh, just, you know, this is all big, this is all crazy, and it could feel like, holy cow, what's going on? There's the mob, there's Madoff, there's Kramer, there's the media, there's short and distort, there's fraud, um, and that could all feel really big and wild. But I, I guess I just want to say one thing that calms me, you know, I'm giving you an example here now of my own tweets, but I know I'm not alone, there were so many others who caught this. I remember having some DMs with people too, who were kind of telling me, hey, did you see this? Um, these are tweets clear back from September, kind of when the filing had come out. Um, and I don't share these to pump my tweets or anything. These are old. These don't really mean much anymore. But the reason I share this is, I guess it just gives me sort of encouragement and calm that apes are going to catch things. Apes are going to see things and we're going to be there for each other and communicate about stuff and we're not going to let it go. And so even that's what I'm doing today. I'm just presenting to you some information of things that, you know, in some cases other apes, in some cases myself have kind of discovered. And in some cases, potentially, Adam is telling us, you know, who knows? Maybe it was some of the other theories, but I find this interesting. So let's just kind of circle it all back to what we know. So we know Millennium has these sort of past criminal affiliations. We know there's connection to short and distort in the past, like documented cases of short and distort. Um, we know there's kind of a past connection to Madoff and Apollo circles and all of that. I'm calling that circles, just you know, think of it as people who were rubbing elbows together. Um, we know that they've got a past of engaging in various types of fraud and market manipulation around IPOs. And we know that they've got a past of going long to effectively um, short and dump, kind of, you know, short and distort, and then short and dump kind of can go together. But also now just, I guess I will put on the tinfoil a little bit. Um, oh, sorry, not there yet. Uh, first, we also saw that timing connection. So they bought all that 8, 824. We had the big spike in FTDs, 824. Uh, failure to deliver. If some of you don't know what FTDs are that I'm referring to, maybe go look that up. Um, kind of a big deal in a, in a big way. A lot of us think that sort of Wall Street's running a Ponzi scheme, um, just playing a shell game with our money and keeping liquidity. Um, and then, interesting, so I will put on the tinfoil one moment. The timing of Adam's tweet and the connection to that uh, Millennium case and the timing of 
and Millennium being connected to Madoff and then the timing of the Netflix Madoff special. I, I found that interesting as well. But here I just openly admit I'm kind of engaging in sort of playing around with a little bit of tinfoil. So I'm not saying that that is definitely connected. Uh, I just, at the very least, boy, there's a lot of messaging out there right now about Wall Street fraud. Let's put it that way. So questions I have. And in some cases, these aren't maybe questions as much as just even thinking out loud. So that's why I called it ponderings. So why so much ape for Millennium? What was their interest? What was their game? Now, I've talked about some possibilities. You know, apes are smart. Some of you will even think of some things I haven't mentioned. So that, that's one thing out there. Um, I think it'd be worth just continuing to track what's happened since that filing. And now I don't just mean the price action of ape obviously could be related. Um, uh, in fact, I would suggest almost certainly related. Um, but what else has happened with Millennium and what do we not know um, in terms of their transactions? Um, why? Would Adam's tweet, you know, highlight a case from 2002? I I've mentioned maybe some possible connections, but uh, potentially worth thinking about a little deeper. And then this is just my own pondering. You know, we saw, so what I was showing you was that those are voting shares, right? Um, Izzy and his entities purchased a whole lot of votes uh, if, if they did not dump them, if they still own them. So. This was just something that popped in my head. I have no DD behind this. I have no real reason to say this, so let me be super clear about that. But was the Antara deal potentially a counterweight? You know, Antara, if you look at the 8K filing, they're committed to a yes vote with all of their shares. So I, I could see that potentially being a counterweight, you know, against Izzy's votes. But I'm completely wildly making that up. No idea if that's true. So uh, here's the links. So I mentioned the article, the first case that I referenced, the Millennium Ape filing, and then that second case that I referenced. I know this is obviously for you, just a video, you can't click on this, uh, but I'm just figuring you can screenshot this and go to these if you like. I got to these mostly with simple Google searches, um, just because, you know, I mentioned we kind of were on this at the time, back in September. Um, I, I just kind of remembered some of these things and went back and got them. Um, so there those are, screenshot that if you like. And then just, I want to end with kind of a positive, because again, this is all wild. It's frankly pretty dark and pretty sad that this stuff is going on and, and pretty frustrating. Um, and a lot of us start to believe also the regulators are captured. You know, if you look at the Madoff documentary, you understand how poorly or even intentionally the SEC did not act um, or how, you know, how poorly they were run and how they did not act. So. Uh, we're kind of seeing history repeat, in my opinion. You know, a lot of us are talking about is Ken Griffin sort of Bernie times three or Bernie 2.0, but then now I'm highlighting some interesting facts about Izzy here too. Regardless, there's a lot going on on Wall Street that just feels like some activity has been happening in the dark. Um, and I happen to believe that things that are done in the dark eventually come to the light. So that's, you know, my aim here. I know that's a lot of yours, your aims. <laughs> Let's get our English right here. Anyway, the aim of many of you is to continue to shine a spotlight and continue to fight for what's right. And so just never allow yourself to become the victim and say, well, I roll over and give up. I'm not going to give up. Ultimately, for me, though, too, let's bring it all back because we can get into all these conspiracy theories and all these big events happening. Um, but you know what? In the end, it's simple. For me, at least, it's simple. I believe AMC is not going bankrupt. I've done my DD. I've studied that. You're going to have to do your own DD. Never just take someone else's word for it. You know, I can't offer financial advice. Um, but I believe with deep, deep conviction, AMC is not going bankrupt. I believe with deep conviction, profits are coming. I've done the work. You know, some of you maybe have heard me say I have two master's degrees in business. Um, someday I may dox myself to prove that so that it's not a trust me bro. Uh, I have 21 years at a, at a Dow Jones company. And uh, that doesn't mean I'm anything special. All it means is I, I know how to read uh, numbers, let's say. I know how to understand financials. And so I do believe profits are coming. I base that on just even the movies that are coming this year. Um, we, we've got some good quarters. I, I would even go on the record, um, again, this is just a forecast, so it could be wrong, but I believe we have anywhere from one to three profitable quarters this year and potentially uh, 2024 being an entire profitable year. So uh, good things are coming in my opinion. The short interest, you know, is as high now as it was 
more than a year ago. Um, I guess I said last June, but I mean here June of 21. Um, so if the short interest is just as high as when we ran to 72, and now there's short interest on APE on top of that, and on top of all that, um, you know, that's mid-2021, AMC's uh, financials have improved since then, and there's a whole lot more movies since then. So, you know, a company that's in a stronger position is just as shorted or maybe more as it was back then. And, uh, you know, if it's not going bankrupt, then eventually that's a real problem for the shorts. So for me, I believe the thesis and the data that has nothing to do with all this Millennium stuff and the mob and Kramer and Madoff and all of that. It was just really interesting information. You know, when you put it all in one place, it becomes extremely interesting to me. So that's why I was like, huh, I'm going to share this because like you like I just said, when you put everything in one place, it just tells a heck of a story. Um, but in the end, even if we don't understand all this, and I don't, I'm going to admit, I don't understand everything going on. This stuff is wild and big. And, you know, I tell my, my family sometimes this is bigger than I can even explain. Um, but in the end, I'll be honest, I don't always feel like I have to understand all of it. I just need to understand my thesis and why I hold. Um, and so I'm going to stick around. And I hope uh, some of you will too. Let's go.